Here we go, off and running, hour number three, and as we always do on these Monday nights during the third hour, we try to bring you the very best information, the updates as they come in about the encroaching and invading radioactivity, the radiation from the Fukushima Daiichi destroyed, not crippled, not uh, compromised, not hobbled. It is a destroyed nuclear power plant, and it is awful. What it has done to the Pacific Ocean is nothing less than exterminated. This is a massive extinction event. We don't know how many fish are even left in the ocean. No one can prove it. I remember the guy from Australia who took his sailboat and sailed from Japan to San Francisco. Oh, it must be three, four years ago now. And he said, this is about a year after the disaster, he said in a news conference that he loves to make that trip because he is astonished at the entire length and breadth of wildlife, sea life, uh, birds, fish, you name it, whales, all the way across, all the way across the ocean. And when he made that trip, he held a news conference and he said, the ocean is broken. He saw in his entire journey when he left Osaka, Japan, two fish, one bird, and one whale with an enormous tumor on its head. That's all he saw. The guy was absolutely devastated, broken-hearted, devastated. Uh, he'll never forget. I'll never forget reading that story. It's it's really that bad. Now the latest from Fukushima proper uh, really coincides with exactly what uh, Yoshi has been telling us uh, for years. What we've been reporting here. Uh, Dana knows it, and most of you who listen regularly know it. Many of you listening right now are in the nuclear field or have uh, contacts and connections in it. You understand the business and how how really dreadful it is. It's not a good business. No one can argue that anymore. Billions of pieces. That's B with a, a, a B, all right? Not to be funny, but it's billions. Billions of pieces of Fukushima nuclear fuel have spread pretty much everywhere. It's truly frightening. Wherever there's cesium, there's plutonium. All right, this comes from Japan. When that reactor number three blew up, that was the MOX reactor, remember that. And it blew the entire core, apparently up and out of that building, into the air, and just reduced it to uh, from nano-sized particulates all the way up. I mean, there were pieces being found all over the place. That's where the fuel went in that case. The other two reactors melted down and melted through containment, we believe, and God only knows where those melted fuel rods are now. They're in pieces, they're down there in maybe some molten core, they're down in the groundwater, they're continually polluting the ocean. We know all about this. If you paid attention, you'll understand. Most importantly, it is not only up against the West Coast now and being deposited there around the clock in the air and in the water, but it is migrating inland now. It is moving inland. And God only knows how many people are going to die from Fukushima radiation. The government will never admit it, but it's, it's, it's funny to see now after five plus years, even some of the scientists are beginning to say, well, it, it, we can't rule out radiation in terms of the massive animal and sea life and sea mammal die off. Of course they can't rule it out. They know what's going on, but they've been uh, pressured and certainly uh, subjected to harassment from the government in many cases to shut up. That's the way it works. All right, let's find out who's there. I think both our uh, esteemed colleagues are there. Uh, Dana, are you standing by up there? Sounds like it. I am so, Jeff. Thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. Good. All right. Very glad to hear it. That's Dana Dernford in British Columbia, the man who proved with pictures and video that the entire British Columbia coast, the tide pools, are essentially devoid of life. Instead of thousands of species represented, you might find, what did you find, eight or ten, a dozen? Uh, there was a hundred all together, but on any given spot where you would be lucky to find a dozen by far, normally two to seven. Wow. And, and a typical spot should have four or five hundred in that couple hour period. You got. Yeah. Remember this uh, destination, the British Columbia coast, was a major tourist uh, event in the summers. People would come from all over to see the incredible tide pools all up and down and all the 30,000 islands out there, offshore, beautiful islands now. 
in many ways, in many cases, they are they are also devoid of life, meaningful life. There's just nothing much left. Uh, I know here in Oregon, we have seen, I have seen a diminution in the number of uh, of songbirds, of just migrating birds, small birds, finches, uh, red-winged blackbirds. We don't see them here anymore. And I see very few insects. It's the same thing that we first heard from Dana. Nothing on the windshield to clean off. Not much. They're just not there. No insects, no birds. Not good. Uh, Yoshi, are you standing by, and where are you? You're still in Southern California, yeah, I'm right? Down, I'm in down Southern California. I've been delayed by this uh, report I'm writing on the uh, situation along the beaches here because we have that massive uh, kill-off yeah. of these uh, red tuna crabs, these yeah, small yeah. lobster-like creatures. And uh, part of the... Uh, basically nearly total kill off of all marine life in the tide pools and from what I can trace to the kind of uh, uh, shells that are washing up uh, in uh, very small very tiny shells washing up uh-huh. it looks like the sandbars are uh, all wiped out and the red tooth crabs would have been in these sandbars so oh, it's looking yeah. like a massive uh, kill off not just along the coast you know immediate uh, tide pools along shore and beaches but you know further along 50 yards to 100 yards out to sea uh, down to at least we know some of the habitat about 50 to 70 feet uh, below the water and then there's these giant canyons and all where things drop off so this is basically the strip where there's a lot of life forms but there is basically a, a near total uh, kill off of whole species and uh, terrible situation and there's a very dramatic event and it confirms what Dana has been researching you know that yeah. uh, these tide pools were that were affected two years ago the last time I was out here during the San Onofre shutdown. I remember when crisis. you told us that sure. Yeah we found uh, that's when the sea lions were really starting to go out and the mothers were dying at sea and all that so it's hitting the higher mammals by that. So there was a crisis out at sea where they feed, but the tide pools were still, they were radioactive, but there was still a lot of life on very rich, you know, sea anemones, sure. sea snails, uh, fish, and so on. But now, in the two years since, it's like a shocking dev- zone of devastation. Well, and then we, these kill off these, you know, you, we, now these you predicted that. Dana predicted that. We, we, all, yeah. we told the people it was moving down the coast. And there may be some isolated pockets where there's still some reasonable tide pool activity. We would expect that. Remember, the radiation yeah. comes over in plumes, uh, in mm-hmm. cells, as it were, and it's in varying concentrations, but it is taking a total, absolute toll up and down the West Coast. You don't even hear about sea lions or, or sea mammals, the higher end of the food chain, uh, talked about anymore at all. What's going on down no, there with these rescue there centers? so many... There's, there's just very few few around here. You just the abundance is not there. I remember beaches uh, being packed with these animals, kind of a nuisance, you know, smelling new, but now there's sort of like a, a total absence, you know, just, they're just not there anymore. So it is shocking how things have changed and wow. people in quiet denial. And when we have, you know, this is California, you know, freedom land, People express themselves. They protest over everything. They have referendums and propositions on, you know, on voting on everything. You know, any anything goes. But around this is a sort of a biological apocalypse. There's kind of a a, a a sad silence. You know, people in denial, and it's shocking because I'm used to that in Japan, but not not used to that in wild and woolly California here. It's just like it's. It throws me off that this issue is um, people handle it differently than other issues. You know, right. Well, most of them hard, are, you, know. you said it, they're in denial. Most of them don't want to handle it, and the government has no yeah. problem uh, not telling people because they know people don't want to hear about it. They don't want to hear bad news. So yeah, it, it unfortunately too, it, works both ways. Too large, yeah. It's too large in scale. It's too strange, you know, yeah. scientifically. It's just beyond the mental grasp of most people and so they don't feel they can do anything about it and they just sort of bow their heads and accept it you know, and this is absolutely the wrong approach because that's a signal to Tokyo Electric Power or the people at Hanford or the people or the, the EPA Canyon, uh, anybody or the EPA, else sure keep, yeah no one's protesting so let's dump more I mean people don't understand you know unless you speak out and protest 
these guys, it's, a, it's a green light for these guys to gosh, no, I, we don't know what else they've got in their arsenal to unleash. And there's no serious investigation of what I found was what I believe to be what you know, evidence I have. I got some hard evidence that uh, there's a lot more and uh, much more, uh, let's say, radioactive, dangerous, lethal material right. that was dumped from secret nuclear weapon sites in the Fukushima area. They were, you know, I found, I traced some of that high-level radiation to one fishing port uh, that I've reported from before. And in, in the material, the road, the radiation just goes down to that port, and the fishing nets there are highly radioactive. So I believe many more tons of plutonium were dumped into the sea, you know, deliberately to hide evidence, you know, from the world. Uh, Japan's working, has been working uh, very heavily, seriously on a, on a major nuclear warhead program and has been dumping, you know, and after Fukushima, a lot of those labs were destroyed by the earthquake and they dumped that material into the Pacific Ocean. And this would account for the just shocking levels of uh, kill-offs we're seeing yeah, across it's, the Pacific. It, yeah. You know, yeah. Right. Well, I, I I go back to the the guy, the yachtsman, uh, and mm-hmm. I when when I broke, you were with me then, and we we broke yeah, that yeah. story, and yeah. we knew where it was going, and, and we extrapolated yeah. from that. I mean, here's for here's our first real independent confirmation mm-hmm. that what we were saying yeah. well, was true, and it is now, Dana. Yeah. What what I want to ask you about. The mammals up there, the sea mammals, the higher end of the food chain. Did you used to get a lot of, of sea lions and seals up on shore and in the bays and harbors up there? It had to be, right? Yeah, the whole coastline, right from one end to the other end, every other nook and cranny. And they were territorial and they get in your face all the time. So, yes, the answer 100%. And a friend of mine, we have, we used to have uh, two or three hunters just down right here. And a friend of mine was telling me a couple of days ago, there's probably ten, maybe down there, and uh, see these are seals, sea lions, sea lions, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot of that. Uh, where it's disappeared, I've seen that throughout the whole coastline, and I have pictures up on my site where I went right up to two seals. One was a baby, less than three feet away from them. They never even tried to, to leave. Never seen anything like that in my entire life. Too weak. Yeah, and it was uh, just horrible. Uh, they were they were burnt. They were physically looked like they were burnt. Oh God! You know the part of this that uh, that we don't talk about maybe enough. We do mention it here, but we as a, a society, the government knows they're doing serious research on this all the time. It's completely hidden. They will not let on about any of it. We know what they're doing. They measure everything in the air. They measure the ocean at varying depths. They know what's coming up on shores. I believe that the EPA is one of the biggest criminal organizations in recorded history because of this. They know, and they will not tell anybody. Now, we have a right to life, remember? Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You don't have life, forget the other two. The government is supposedly in the job of protecting our right to life. They're not doing that. They're doing the opposite of that by not telling us what's going on. That's my view. Well, you're right, Jeff. Yeah, Yeah, you're right, Jeff. I mean, I've been doing a lot of research into this. You know, my paper, the the article I'm writing for you has been delayed because I've been looking much more into this domoic acid business. And um, what... I, I I see now very distinctly there's a correlation between uh, where domoric acid is and where uh, nitrogen producing industries are. You know, uh, uh, oh. uh, along along major uh-huh. ports where uh-huh. ships, uh-huh. you know, the commercial vessels, yeah. they routinely leave port and they illegally clean out their bilges, including fuel tanks, you know, that are emptied out, and there's water that's left over. They dump everything. They dump uh, sewage, they they dump fuel, they dump bilge, they just, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And out of the uh, Vancouver area, out of uh, the uh, Puget Sound, Canada, you have these uh, ships that go out for Alaska cruise ships, right? And uh, I know people who were on the ships were just shocked that they dumped all their waste, the human, the sewage, off these ships right into the waters. Untreated. They were just stunned. Untreated, untreated sewage, 
on these Alaskas. Uh, you know, they just dump it, their garbage, everything goes out, you know. So there's a lot of nitrogen in, along with agriculture waste. And the other big source, I know, is where there's small gas in Southern California, is wherever there's offshore oil rigs. Uh, oil platforms because they illegally release natural gas and there's and natural gas in this in that area you know outside LA outside Santa Barbara uh, it may contain up to seventy percent of ammonia yeah you know? ammonia nitrogen okay mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and the malic acid uh, the largest bloom ever to happen happened in two thousand two off the coast of Washington State and the it's called the Juan del Fuga. Uh, eddy. It's a vast uh, oceanic eddy outside the mouth of the Salish Sea there, you know, between Canada and mm-hmm. the USA. It swirls around. This is where all this dumping is going on, where the North Pacific Current comes in, the uh, Puget Sound goes out, the Salish Sea goes out. So it's all of this nitrogen uh, stuff is out there, and this occurred in a very, very, the, one of the weakest El Nino years. So it has nothing to do with global warming or, anything like that, or climate change. Right. In a relatively cool year, and it was the largest boom, 30 kilometers across ever. Uh, the Sudonichia, which is the uh, is, is the uh, microorganism responsible yeah. for domoic dom- dom- acid. T- so tell our tell our listeners, Yoshi. Excuse me. Tell our listeners why domoic acid is even being uh, talked about tonight. What, what's well, the deal? Seeing, uh, they're they're saying that domoic acid. Okay, the University of California at Santa Cruz has a lab which is saying that domoic acid, this uh, one kind of microorganism, Pseudonychia is called, is, a, you know, uh, is the cause of this marine kill-off. You know, it calls many types of species, including the great whales, you know, the big whales, right. the great whales. Uh, which is ludicrous. The, whales, yeah. the say whale. This is an absurd theory because, as I pointed out last week, the California Department of Public Health puts out maps, and they're showing relatively low levels of uh, of demolic acid during the El Nino, which is a high Nino, 2015, and this this year, they're saying that you know it's not a problem. There's no toxic shellfish poisoning. There's uh, none of that this year. You can go out and pick plants. So they're they're saying you know uh, demolic acid is low, whereas there's one lab which is being picked up by the media everywhere and by other labs that you know, by Woods Hole now are saying oh there's a massive amount of demolic acid. It's not true. It's not true. The California Public Health Department made that very clear. They've got the data. They've got the stations where they measured, hmm. and there is no shellfish warning. Okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so this is like uh, this is basically a major lie. And I'm thinking, you know, what makes these guys do this? These marine chemists and marine biologists. Why do they? And I'm looking at the oil platforms because I can see them. You know, I can see them off in the. I got it. I just seen a report saying that these oil rigs are actually beautiful reefs for all these fishes and marine mammals. No, they're turning. Oh, please. The thing that is spewing. You yeah. know, we can see the petroleum on the water, okay? The, you know, you've seen the of course you can. crude oil. Of sure. Water. Yeah, but the marine biologists and marine chemists are saying these, are, these rigs are wonderful places for marine animals. I mean, oh, I've, I've heard that. These guys. I've heard that. You, 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 you understand what I'm saying? Oh, they God. write... The yeah. environmental impact reports for Shell and BP and Exxon and Mobile, right? These guys are making million dollar contracts, you know, giving the clearance for new oil rigs. No wonder these labs are telling us this crop of, you know, baloney, this crop of nitrogen, okay? Yeah. They're dumping on the world and saying, oh, it's domoic acid. And they say, it has to do with uh, climate change in El Nino, right? <laughs> the truth is, the bulk acid has something to do with their own partners, corporate mm-hmm. partners, and mm-hmm. the oil industry, commercial shipping, okay? So this is the reality of how sold out these scientists are. Yeah. Now, Dana... This whole yeah. Okay? Dana, are you hearing the demoic acid excuse up in your neck of the woods in British Columbia? Are they rolling that out to... Yep, they've been hammering away at that for a couple of years. And, I know uh, I heard it in the past. I wanted to see if they were still at it. I guess that's their number one line of defense, isn't it? The demoic over, acid over, excuse. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we had no end to it and either. For, uh, and for Dana, uh, the question ahead. is how cold can El Nino make the waters off the coast of Canada? That's a long ways from the equator, right? It's a long yeah. ways. It makes no sense. They were saying the other day six degrees warmer than it should be. 
Oh, six really? Degrees, yeah, yeah, six degrees warmer. That's a big shift. That's huge. That's because there's no glacier it? ice coming down from the mountains. To oh, keep there the you go. Okay. That's cool what cooled it there. There you go. Okay. Well, that that uh, that uh, that just counters the whole thing. Nothing to it, El Nino. For those yeah, of you who don't know, uh, Dana has been reporting on this program for a long time and on his own site. There is no more glacier ice in British Columbia, in the coastal ranges, or I don't know where they would. Where would there some be if there's any left at all? The uh, mountain ranges travel the whole coast of Canada, the Rocky Ranges and right. Cascades, and that. And yeah, and so they they are vital because there are thousands of years of ice and has been doing this regulating streams, estuary lakes, rivers, and everything else, and then finally the coastline itself. So in adverse weather conditions, you can count on that regulating it during droughts and stuff like that. We we didn't have it last year, and all the salmon spawned in the estuaries at the bottom of the rivers. Uh huh. And I'll die off. So you've been saying Dolmoic acid, but they're running out of steam on that one. They got no no way to back it, as like Yoshi's saying, right? They really don't got yeah. nothing. Okay, tell me more about the. I asked you last time about the fishing in the Gulf of Alaska and off the BC coast. What are you getting by way of totals, in terms of percentages of fish caught, time spent, crews, and all that? What what's the status of the industry? Nothing this year. I haven't heard a single thing outside of everything. Was I closed haven't down. either. And I've everything looked. I've closed down. I've done Great some time. searching. I can't find anything. No, I'm not hearing nothing. I'm not seeing any activity. I haven't heard anybody a peep about it outside of it's closed. <laughs> there. They're in desperation mode. They can't last a whole year now. Uh, they got away with with almost well five years, but they won't get away with this year. That's the end of the game now. I see China called it out. Uh, Japan, and a story came out today. One of the major China papers is called um, "Tokyo Handling of Fukushima Aftermath Lacks Responsibility." It was a quite a dressing down when you consider its mainstream media doing it. They started off with a in. In the story of one famous Chinese idiom, a man plugs his ears while trying to steal a bell. A little slurring that time. Foolishly believing that by doing so, others would hear the sound of the bell when it is moving away. So he plugged his ears so people wouldn't hear the bell. Of course, they hear the bell and he gets caught. And the cautionary tale of burying one's head in the sand applies aptly to the handling of the Fukushima incident by the Japanese government. Which has chosen to turn a deaf ear to the aftermath of the worst nuclear accident in decades. So I mean, that's quite a dressing down. They go on to say where Tokyo needs to explain to its people and the world what's really going on with the radiation, basically. Yeah, yeah, they should. All right, hold on. We have to take a little break. We'll come right back. Fukushima report for you. Remember, Fukushima is not over there. Fukushima is over here. 24 hours a day. I've been exposed. Uh, probably all of you listening in the western U.S. have been directly exposed. Most of you in the entire country have certainly been exposed at a lower level. But it's, remember, cumulative. Remember what Arnie Gunderson said in Seattle? After the big blast at Fukushima, the average resident of Seattle was inhaling up to six hot fuel particles a day. Now, where do you think those fuel particles went? They went into their lungs. What do you think is going to happen? It's like a machine gun that never stops firing. Never stops firing. They're going to get sick in time and die. Although it'll be plausibly deniable that it was Fukushima. Well, I didn't smoke at all. I'm not a smoker. Why do I have lung cancer? Well, the answers are going to be grim, and uh, they'll be, I think, unavoidable. Uh, Gunderson also said that, uh, he said about Nagasaki and Hiroshima, he said, that's not what we're seeing at Fukushima in terms of uh, particulates of death. He said, everything I'm finding, this is a quote, 
Everything I'm finding here is millions and billions of very, very small particles that are spread pretty much everywhere. Now, the reactors, the nuclear reactors at Fukushima had a hundred tons of uranium in them so that the quantity of radiation that's spread out throughout the countryside is orders of magnitude higher at Fukushima than it was at Nagasaki. But we have to remember, and I, I, I want to hear from both of you guys on this, that these particulates didn't stay in Japan. A lot of them went out to sea, and they some float, some sank, some were in the air, they were nano-sized particulates. That's how the people in Seattle ended up breathing these things six a day for a period of a week to two weeks. That's just a guess, but they were breathing them. So we have, I don't know how much over here, it's taken up residence here. Whatever the particular radionuclide is, you can extrapolate from that how long they're going to be here. And we're talking tens of thousands of years. We might as well have been through a nuclear war here to a large degree. Has anybody measured any of the particulates there in BC that you know about, Dana? I ran the Geiger counter all day today with an extra camera, so my live streams, the Geiger counter is live. For the last number of days, I've been hitting 300 regularly, but no, to answer your question, we had 220 million particles, uh, atoms per liter of rainwater, sorry about that, per liter of rainwater here in Vancouver, and that was iodine-129, so that, that was uh, meant everything else was also there. The See, they only, let me, excuse me, let me say one thing. That Dana just put his finger on something really important. When you hear a report about iodine, radioactive iodine, 131, they're not talking about the over, what is it, 200 other radionuclides that could be equally as present? Well, that's what they say, but if you, if you actually look through the papers, thousands... Jeff, uh, in California, there was 300, your average person in California after the accident was ingesting 360 uh, sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyball particles. These are very hot particles. And for the males, they uh, congregate in the testicles. Uh, this went on for months and months and months. And there was another study out of California where there was 1,500 of uh, these uh, buckyballs, sulfur peroxide uh, very dangerous stuff per cubic meter of air, and so that's why people were breathing in so much down there. Oh my so we know, god, I never yeah, heard this that. Was Boston, yeah, I covered it yesterday. This was Boston, also got the same, not as many numbers, and then you had Seattle, these were confirmed. Yeah, uh, and so the plumes that came in never stopped coming in. It wasn't just a plume, of course, and it's still coming out of it the same way. Yeah, real bad news, they can't hide it anymore. They're starting to panic. People, uh, systems and countries now are starting to revolt. And then all this pompous about new nuclear plants and all this hype and everything else they've been pumping out there is coming to a drop. Hey, there won't be any more die-offs after this year because there won't be nothing left to die off in the Pacific Northwest. That's the fact. We've well, already you, done the whole been, coastline. You're the man. You're the no, we've man. done the whole coastline. It's going to be yeah. gone before this yeah. year. Is yeah. Open. yeah. Uh, Yoshi, I think what we're seeing in California is uh, unmistakable, uh, absolutely compelling evidence that the same thing will end up, maybe a little more slowly, to be the case in California. You still there, Yoshi? Oh, we lost him. All right, maybe we can get him back. But this thing, and I don't know how, and I go back to what I said earlier, and maybe, maybe you you agree, disagree, it doesn't matter, folks, but the fact of the matter is, the government knows precisely what's going on. The airlines know what's going on. One of the major airlines allows flight crews to fly the North Pacific route only once a month because the radiation is that bad. Okay? This is, I read this. I ran the story. I don't know what the others are doing. But this is, Dana, this is something that, that we're not going to find out about. I believe they've got measuring devices and ships out there that are taking surface water 50 meters, 100 meters, 300 meters deep. They're measuring the air right on up to the stratosphere. They know what's going on. I, and I have no doubt. Yeah, they flew the coastline of Canada on the 18th, 19th, and 20th of that year, a couple of days after the accidents, folks. And uh, they used sophisticated detection devices, and they mapped it out, and then they hid it away for about three years, and then it was leaked online, and then it got confirmed. 
And so all the governments, we had already gave them the authority, the equipment, the monetary, and uh, the ability, and everything they ever hoped and dreamed for, pensions and everything, to go do that. So they had all the equipment. They were doing it anyway in just mock exercises constantly. When Fukushima happened, they, they actually uh, rolled out a whole bunch of mobile detecting uh, radiation. At the same time, they turned off all the, the known ones, but they... Yeah, they they jump to us to uh, behind the stage look like you're suggesting. Well, remember what the EPA no. has done? They've shut down 99 out of 150. I'm rounding it off here. That's uh, nuclear nuclear don't monitor- have warranties. That's right. <laughs> 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 nuclear <laughs> monitoring facilities and Boise, Idaho. And in case you don't remember, was hit harder than probably anywhere else for some. The jet stream came up and came down. Uh, Western Idaho hit Boise. It was so Jeff, bad at Boise, they shut the station down, trucked it away. It's never been opened. It's gone. They took it away. We, we we have all played pool like pool tables when we were growing up. So imagine you had a snack bar and you got 150 pool tables and 99 of them breaks in a couple of weeks period. Do you close down the snack bar? Or do you get a warranty or do you get someone to come in and fix it? <laughs> and if you're the government... Yeah. Then we paid you to put it there so you would just replace it. We don't care how much it costs. We want you to replace it. You don't shut it all off. And so that is going to come back and hunt these people real soon. They can't get away from what they've done. It was reported, right? And when people wake up to Fukushima and go back over the last five years and find me and you and Yoshi and, and other people, the handful of other people that were trying, then watch out. And that's happening. That is happening. When you talk to people... uh you're Are getting you, them now. Okay. You're getting the sense. The local that, radio station wants to give me two hours a day, five days a week. What? Yeah, they know who I am, too. They know they watch my shows. You're kidding. I, no, so that's a change in the guard, change in the revolution of things on top of that. I was up on um, Access TV in Victoria, in British Columbia, Canada, the capital of Ca- uh, British Columbia. Uh-huh. And their TV station, I'll be up there most nights now all week from an interview I done last Monday. Uh, and so I'm up there for 25 minutes a day, and that was a really good interview, short but good. And so I'm starting to break into that whole paradigm of things I'm doing. Congratulations. That yeah, is really trying. good news. And, like, I know you offered me a spot on your on your site, and don't think for a second how much I don't appreciate it, but I still haven't got the kinks out of my system. It's still a nightmare each show trying to get through it and organize it. Yeah. And it's still a long way from being... Uh, anything I can do at any talk, time, talk. you just let me know. You got it. So. Thank you, Jeff. No, I know you haven't stopped, my friend. Yeah. We get Yoshi back? I don't know. You there, Yoshi? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about uh, the simple fact that the government, and I mentioned earlier, knows very well what's going on, and they are utterly complicit. This complicity has to do with yeah. genocide. We... They, there are going to be millions of, of uh, casualties and many, many hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of fatalities over time from this. Over here. Over here. No one's talking about it. They will not talk about it. That makes them guilty. They've got blood on their hands. It's wrong. And not one well, person in the Congress is talking about this. Yeah. Uh-huh. Not one senator is talking about this. You see the news. You both watch it. Nobody will touch this thing. Yeah. They're cowards. But it, it's going to be tough to break these corporate interests, and and the fact that the scientific community is really institute institutes are just really locked in with these very exploitative interests, and those that exploit the oceans, especially yeah, the, yeah. you know, internationalization of trade and all that. We're talking about energy industry, nuclear. They all depend on the oceans, right. so there's money to be made there, and there, no one's going to rock the boat. And uh, and you see uh, President Obama going over there to supposedly insulted you know, those at, people. Oh. Yeah, Hiroshima and all that. But the the reality there, he's actually going there to back up the Abbey administration's nuclear policy. So we got an administration here which is just diehard pro nuke. They and uh, Fukushima's right. happened under watch and is destroying. Uh, all of North America, and in fact, both of them, both of the Americas, North and South America. So it's really important that the next administration has got to stop at the, start at the top because Congress is sold out. out. Hopefully, the next president uh, will be someone who will be strong and independent enough to, you know, to look after the interests of everyone, not just who live on the coast. This radiation is all over the country, and to take a stand. And hopefully, they'll be able to show enough leadership to get. Justin Trudeau in Canada to take a stand against his own 
uranium mining industry. You know, industry. The, the bad we need news. Political leadership on this. Yeah. Well, we mm-hmm. need we need honest, brave men this, this and women. Is survival we, of the we country, don't. You know, yeah. This is survival of of, of of you know all society in the That's Americas. Right. But That's you right. do need the political leadership. It's got to be at the top. And certainly, uh, we're doing our best just to hold the line. So uh, whoever is, is well, we're, to we, look, your work and Dana's work. We're making it easy for for one of these slime bags yeah. to go public. Yeah. You know what we've done in America yeah. in the primary campaign season? Every single person running for Congress has mm-hmm. won his or her her primary election for two more years, except one person. One person was not reelected through the primaries. We, Americans are nuts. They keep sending yeah. the same crooked elite back there, yeah. the same criminals, the same bought and paid for mouthpieces of, of corporate yeah, exactly. fascist America. They do yeah. not throw them out of office. Every yeah. one but one has won re-election in the primaries. It, it is amazing. There's this tradition of rebellion of the Ross Perot, and then you have the Tea Party, then you have the Sanders right. people. I mean, whether from left, right, or center, people are trying to say the system's not working, it's sold out. And you know, the country, the economy, the people are dying, you know, and something's got to be done. But we're facing bullet this time. Uh, Fukushima is This has only been the five years. we got hundreds more to go. And uh, already in, in less than five years, the West Coast, the Pacific Coast, is dead. You know? So we've got to understand what's coming is going to be worse when people all along, you know, people are going to be dropping Remember, everywhere. It's all as cumulative. It's, as is happening in Japan now. As is happening yeah. in Japan. People are dying on train platforms. It's a co- so common occurrence. No one even bothers to pay attention when the body drops. Dana, when you go on these uh, programs, radio and TV, what is their reaction? Do they act like they, they just had no idea, and in many cases it's probably true? What Or do they question you? Do they play devil's advocate? What do they do? How do they handle the information you're bringing? This is pretty interesting because the hosts can lose their jobs easily. Right, and, and you're right in everything you just said. Um, they bring in the comments from the trolls, and so I can browbeat anything out there at this stage anyway. Ah, but, uh, yeah. I'm pretty, like, when it comes to that stuff, I get really tuned right in on everything that's said and try to stick with whatever I'm being asked. And But I go into detail so they can understand it, hopefully. Um, and it just seems to be that, like you said, that where they don't know. And then they're researching, they're researching as I'm talking, uh, and they're putting it up on the screen, say, for instance. And so they're paying attention, and their uh, reactions are appropriate when you watch the video. Uh-huh. uh of uh, shock and horror and confusion sometimes. They all seem to be appropriate and real. And so I felt good about it. I felt uh, it was really a very strong case that I laid down. You know, and I have restrictions. Go ahead. You know, this, that's good to hear. But come on. Five almost... plus years? Yeah. And they've been living with their heads in the sand or other places we won't mention. They've right. been lied to by their government. Many people have died because of the lies of the government. Oh, yeah. And, and, and here in America, we, we send everybody who's run for re-election in the primaries, but one has been re- won their right to run again. I, this is nuts. These people should all be thrown out, and the whole thing should be flushed, and there should be an entirely new Congress here. Somebody has got to stand up about this, but no one will do it. They're all bought and paid for and owned by big corporate industry, globalism, whatever you want to call it, and they will not talk. All they're doing is running for re-election as soon as they win. It's two years, and they're right back at it. Uh. Hey, Yoshi, uh, when you look at uh, the, the, the man who was sailing across the ocean, yeah. and then you look at what I've done, and now you look at what Yoshi's doing, and we all know how good Yoshi is at covering all the bases. Yeah. We don't leave them any wiggle room whatsoever. You're pummeling them on your front page day after day after day, 24-7. And uh, people are waking up in, in a large number, and they can't hold it back much longer. Algorithms were working, but the truth can't uh, is not right to hide this one away. This and is not it, No, it's, it's, it's totally, totally wrong. Are you back, Yoshi, again? Okay, he's, we've lost him. Uh, sound like his battery went on his phone. Yeah, I was um, sure that. Yeah, the most look. The most important thing is is 
what can people do? First thing they do, they've got to go to nuclearproctologist.org, and they've got to go to my site, and they've got to learn. They've got to listen. They've got to learn. There's some wonderful videos out there. What I, you know what I miss? I miss those, those very brave Japanese who went out with Geiger counters, and they would videotape themselves out in the field, wherever they were, in Tokyo, on the roadsides, and other cities and towns, uh, in the Fukushima prefecture, and they would show the readings. You don't see those anymore, no, not since they passed the law there. But you, you don't talk about that over there anymore unless you want to be arrested and spend years and years in jail. Yeah, and like I say, during my streams each day, now i got a camera on the Geiger counter up in the top left, right hand of the screen, uh, because these are real numbers. In Germany, five Beckwells should throw the food away because they didn't get they is it, take is the Is it bullet. five? Wow. Five, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's their limit for mm-hmm. man-made. Wow. But the reality of it is what we got to do, focusing on doing what everybody got to do, and we all got the same job, is we got to stop those reactors in Japan before we can do anything. We got to protect ourselves, try to take care of ourselves. We got to get away from the Pacific coastline. And, but most importantly... We have to rally this entire planet to stop those reactors. And in order to do that, we might have to uh, produce peer review studies all day long, thousands of studies based upon trying to deal with this. And that's what we should have done. Yeah, no one's doing it. No one's doing it. There should have been an international... And that is what we will do in the future. It'll happen. At some point, yeah. At some point, but there should have been... That's the evolution of this accident. Yeah, I was calling for the first year an international seminar of the top nuclear scientists we can come up that, with. Yeah. And point. never happened. Never happened. And to this moment, the Japanese continued to burn radioactive material in open incinerators in major and medium-sized cities all over Japan. That's how they're burning up their That's waste. That, the, no one, not one person in the United Nations has had the guts to even mention this, as far as I know. Yeah, Nothing. the United Nations on clear... IRPA, uh, Atomic Energy Agencies, yeah. are a group of 100 people total. And uh, it's a good old boys club, and these are banana peddlers. These are the worst things imaginable. But they're, they're all on each of those committees, the same people. Uh-huh. So we're being, there's no consensus, international consensus. is actually an international conspiracy of a, a 100 people. Most of these are retired to nuclear. It's that small of a little bottleneck, yeah. huh? Yeah, we got, we, got well. firm. we got them on video talking about it, laughing about mm-hmm. it. With the press club in Washington, D.C. Oh, you're laughing about it. Uh-huh. Yeah, laughing at it. That's yeah. uh, six weeks ago. And they were showing a perfect uh, number four building at the same time. TEPCO was uh, six weeks ago to the press club. There, You should hear them laughing. <laughs> and it's heartbreaking. Well, I hate to say it, but uh, may, may they reap uh, their just rewards from yeah. this. Uh, and, and those of us who are, are trying are going to, unfortunately, uh, pay the same uh, penalty. People who live along the coast, let's talk about the entire West Coast, from San Diego all the way north to the northern part of uh, British Columbia. What would your advice be to people who live, uh, say, within a mile or two of the coast? Of the 200 miles in sh- inland, at least. 200. 200 minimum. Unless you've got a disposition from the salt. is the yeah. same as disposition for radionuclides. It's the same vector that it's... Uh, release from right. and the same kind of uh, uh, carry weight so to speak yeah. where it's going to be really bad because it's building up from the ocean itself it's falling out of the sky yeah so the whole country is radiated but it's worse within 200 miles of the coastline and that we need as a consensus of people to understand that we've got to stop the reactors or nothing else matters we're going to lose the planet well uh, the, 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 the Fukushima reactors are I'm afraid uh, no longer Addressable. What can we well, do? Yeah, we got to throw six million people at it. Right. We got to sacrifice six million at least, but we got to do it. It's, and it'll, somebody will have to do it in the future. It has to get done, and there's no time to wait. Uh, no. The dead of the Pacific no. Ocean is not going to be the dead of a few million people. It's the dead of, of a few billion. You can't have one without the other. See, we can't have uh, people on this planet, and, and we, we already lost four million species in the Pacific Ocean altogether total. The ones I talk about are just the residential indigenous species. It's frightening, see, and it's worse every year. All the animals are starving to death, emaciated. All the birds are starving to death, emaciated. All the insects are missing. I covered all day to day, study after study after study, recent studies from Canada, from British Columbia, Canada, mm-hmm. of the marine species on the coastline. 
And so all the numbers I used, I covered uh, way more than what anything I ever talk about. Uh, right. and insects and flanders and floors and everything else. It's just incredible diversity in smorgasbord, gone permanently too. And there's no way to turn that clock back. So we've got to get our priorities and stop these reactors in Japan. We're going to lose everything. And we probably already have, but we've got to fight with everything we got at some point. And we will. Now is the time to get moving. It's like a meteorite coming out. It's no different. And we just we can't see it with our naked eye. Very good point. So, yeah. D- meanwhile, the Iranians just signed an agreement with uh, Russia to build uh, another reactor. Uh, it, this has got to stop. Posturing. It's just posturing. Yeah, it's posturing. Pakistan is going to back Russia on another one in another country. And it's just, just posturing. The nuclear industry, look, we take our loved ones to the hospital. We inject nuclear waste in them and kill them. Two percent of the people survive chemotherapy. You had to sign a waiver for your loved one to have that. So... All of our hospitals and all our communities are brainwashed and doing it to us. And we're doing it to ourselves by bringing our children there and our loved ones. And we got to break that paradigm real quick. Hugs for everybody. Thank you, Dana. All right. Talk Thank to you, you soon. Too. You yep, be too. well. You too. Okay, there's a, uh, a busy Monday night for you. And we will be back tomorrow night, Tuesday. And carry on. Continue to try to keep you up to date on everything we can. And uh, interesting gentleman on the first hour tomorrow night, Herbert Dorsey. Uh, looking forward to hearing from him. Very interesting man. And Terrible Tim and Frosty Wildridge tomorrow night. We'll carry right on through the week. Thanks for being here. Talk tomorrow.